What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. I am so stoked to have you guys here. I know it's pretty difficult times right now with COVID going on, but everyone is at home. So it's a perfect opportunity to learn a new skill, get better at video editing. That's exactly what we're gonna do today. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Webster. I am a travel videographer. I do this full time. Um, right now, currently not traveling. So I'm at home making YouTube videos for you guys. In today's video, we're gonna cover organization in Final Cut Pro. I think this is something that I've got really good at, or I think I've got good at um, over the past little while, just because as projects get bigger and bigger, organization becomes more important. And in the end, it just makes video editing so much easier and quicker. So in today's video, we're gonna cover all about importing, renaming files, organizing your Final Cut libraries and projects and events, and then exporting as well. So it's gonna be a really quick tutorial, but you guys are gonna learn a lot of information. So let's hop on the computer and let's get it done. Okay, before we get started on this tutorial, I wanna do a couple little tips and tricks that I have um, in terms of getting better video editing. I'm running the new 16 inch MacBook Pro, which has been really good for video editing. And the best thing you can possibly do is add a two terabyte SSD hard drive into your laptop. I do this because then I can edit files remotely on my desktop without having to plug in hard drives. Uh, Lacy five terabyte, these metal ones from the Apple store, which are awesome for backing up footage. Um, so I can copy everything to my hard drive and then I carry two with me, um, one as a backup and then as a backup backup. So I have three copies of my footage at all times. And then what I recently did for a very important shoot is actually had a, another one and that was specifically for a certain project. So it was a four part documentary, um, multiple cameras, multiple days, um, so it's really important to keep everything organized. And then me and two other business partners also had the exact same hard drive. So we all had copies of everyone's footage. So there's like three to five copies of footage running around, which is awesome to have that type of redundancy. So hopping into the computer now, I'm gonna walk you through that project and sort of how we laid out all the video files. So you can see that they are on my desktop right now. We have the four different projects here. Jasper Tour Company, Mohican Trails, Métis Crossing, and Painted Warriors. This was for Indigenous Tourism Alberta, which was a super fun project to be a part of. And then if we open up one of them, um, you can see here, I always have a Final Cut library for an individual project. This is really good for two reasons. The first reason is you can keep everything super organized in that library. I used to be so bad with this in Final Cut and I just have one library, it would just be, I used to call it FCPX and then I'd have like, 50 different projects um, all laid out and it is so annoying it literally just slows your computer down it's not fun at all photo and video always keep copies of photos and video i'd never like to delete anything you never know when something's going to happen a client is going to ask for something later on down the road so try and keep all your raw files and then hopping into the video folder now i can show you sort of the breakdown of what i like to do so if you have multiple cameras use your drone or you have Mark camera, I like to call it if there's another camera, my business partner is Brayden. I will usually just label it as Brayden for his folder. And then we know whose camera is whose, whose footage is whose, if you wanna label it as A roll, B roll, if you're running it like that. Um, if you have a GoPro, we can add another folder for GoPro. If you have that type of footage, a drone, camera A, camera B, um, GoPro. Try and keep everything as organized as possible. And then going into the folder, one of the most important things with video editing and organization is renaming your files. For the longest time, I didn't do anything like that. Um, and in the end, it just gets confusing. If you shoot on Sony, you just get C001, and then you get that over and over again. And what can happen in Final Cut is if both cards were formatted on each of the cameras, and then you import the footage, is it won't import because it already thinks that it has that file name in there. So sort of a naming structure that I like to do, if you go Command A, if you're on a Mac, select them all, right click and go rename. And then I would like to do the client. So this is ITA, the project, Painted Warriors. And then the camera, this is me. So I'm gonna do Mark Webster and then start the numbers from one from there. So now all your file names are formatted. You know what the project was, what video it's for, and then which camera it was from, which is super important. You never wanna get things organized, and then when you go to try and find your files, it makes it really easy. Hopping into the Final Cut library now, this is really why I love to have a specific library for each project. It makes it really easy, so if you look on the left, I make a new event for the project. This is where I keep all the video files. So you can see I have A-Roll Selects, Métis Crossing, Interview 1, Interview 2, Interview 3, 
the full video, 15 second teaser highlight, 30 second teaser highlight, and then you have some of the clips. So if you have any sort of branding, if you have your music, I like to add it into this project event and that's sort of any sort of miscellaneous things that isn't your video sort of files. And then I make another event for, I call the mark, and then I have all the video files here. Then I can easily find my video files and it's not confusing with a different camera, with a drone, with a GoPro, anything like that. And then another folder for drone, just like so, so that you can find drone footage super easily. The worst thing you can do is be hunting. We all know with video editing how long it takes to actually go and find footage and knowing which camera is which and keeping everything organized is super, super important. You may be wondering where are the audio files? Where do you save those? And I personally really like to use Dropbox for any sort of miscellaneous files like that because it keeps everything in place. It's happened so many times where you like download music, you import into Final Cut, and then you wipe your downloads and then the song is gone. Sometimes you can't find it again. That is the most frustrating thing. So if you go into Dropbox, I can't re recommend Dropbox enough for video editing. My company is called Rome Creative, where we do all our video editing going into Indigenous Tourism Alberta. And this is one of the naming structures I have for the projects to keep everything organized. Audio files, we had sort of a backup audio, lab mic going, as well as wireless audio for some of the interviews, contracts, the draft videos, this is for the final deliverables, and then the music, outro cards, and then receipts from the project. So everything is organized in Dropbox, and this makes it really good, especially when you're working with a team. I have two business partners, and we were working on the project together. So if anyone else needs to access those music files or audio files, everything is all in one place versus having things on your hard drive and then they don't have a copy of it. Even if they need a file, then it's all here, easy to find in one place. The other great thing about using Dropbox is that you can use it for your final submission of the project. So in our Indigenous Tourism Alberta folder in Dropbox, we have ITA Stories Through Our Eyes, which is what the project was called. And then we have Photo Video, and then we have all these video deliverables organized in one place. If you're working with a team, they can upload their deliverables, you can upload your deliverables, and it's all in one place, which makes it really easy and keep things organized. The next step in this and why using libraries is super, super important is that when you are done a project, if you look at how big a library actually is, it can range from one gigabyte, two gigabytes, 100 megabytes, gigabytes, sorry. They can be a huge variety of file sizes. So if we go here, we can check out how big this one is right now. So Métis Crossing is 44.76 gigabytes. So what's gonna happen is when we move this off our desktop onto a hard drive and say this project is done, it's been delivered, the client has paid and you move it off, you're still storing 44.76 gigabytes of render files. And that's a lot of render files that you don't actually need to use at all. It just helps in your video editing process. So what you can do actually, if you keep everything keep your one project as a library. If you go into Final Cut, go File, and then Delete Generated Event Files, and then we can delete the render files, unused only, or all of them. So if you open up the project again, it's gonna have to re-render through. So I usually just do unused only, and then if you had optimized media or proxy media, you can delete those as well. And this is just a great way to save space on your hard drives. When you are done a project, you don't have to keep all those extra files. So we can hit done. So in this project, it only saved 10 gigabytes because we left some of the render files that were used for the project. But if you had a big library with hundreds of gigabytes, you can save a lot of space, which is really cool. And then once I'm done, I make sure I recopy those onto my hard drives, just like so. Another service that I really like to use is Backblaze to back up all my hard drives to the cloud, which is awesome. So I have two permanent copies on hand, one at home, one in my bag and then another copy in the cloud with Backblaze. So I'm gonna Backblaze here on my computer. It is 42,000 files left of almost 4 million files. If we go to our preferences, um, you can say I'm backed up as of 1.07 p.m. And basically you can select hard drives to back up um, with Backblaze. So if you have any video files, um, you plug in your hard drive and the computer will automatically start backing up that hard drive to the cloud. So you have three copies of everything, two physical, and then one up in the cloud. So you're never gonna lose footage. That would be the worst possible thing. But that is all I have for this week's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the content on my channel. If you guys do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new here. I really do appreciate all the support. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.